when you're using PowerPoint Presenter View in a Zoom meeting and you only have the one screen, the way you can share just your slides with the audience is to share a portion of your screen, as I show in a previous video, which is in the description below this video on YouTube. Now, when you want to use some of the advanced features of Presenter View, the challenge is that anything that is in that shared portion of the screen is seen by the audience. So in this video, I'll show you how to use the pause and resume feature of Zoom to allow you to use some of those advanced features of Presenter View while still providing a seamless experience for the audience. The pause feature locks the current image on the screen for the audience. So this allows you to do whatever you need to do on your screen without the audience seeing what you're doing. And when you're ready to start sharing again, you use the resume sharing feature. So let's look at how you can do this in Zoom on the Mac. The first step is to set the pause resume global keyboard shortcut in Zoom. So in the Zoom app, we're going to go to the preferences and we're going to go to the section here called keyboard shortcuts. What we'll do is we'll scroll down until we find the one for pausing and resuming. There it is. So pause and resume screen sharing. You'll notice the default sh keyboard shortcut is shift command T. And what we want to do is to make sure we check this checkbox that says enable global shortcut. What this means is that this shortcut will be available regardless of what application we're sharing in Zoom. So whether in presenter view or any other application, this keyboard shortcut will be available. Now, if this shortcut is used by another application, you can simply click in this area to edit it as it says in that tooltip. So once we've set this, we now enabled our ability to use the pause or resume keyboard shortcut in presenter view and all other applications, which allows us to access those advanced features within presenter view a lot easier. We are done, so we can just close the settings here and continue on to enter into presenter view. In presenter view, when you're sharing a portion of your screen, you have to be careful when you're using the laser pointer or drawing tools, because anytime the cursor moves into that portion of the screen you're sharing, the audience will see it. So to use these tools, I suggest you use the shortcut keys. If you want to use the laser pointer, Start with your cursor outside of the visible area that is being shared with the audience and use the shortcut key, which is Command L. Your cursor looks like it hasn't changed, but as soon as you move it over that visible portion, you can now see you can use this laser pointer on the slide. And then you can move it off and press Command A to return the laser pointer back to the regular arrow cursor. You can use the pen in a similar way. The shortcut key for the pen is Command P. Then when you move your cursor over, you'll see the pen icon. I can use my left mouse button and now I can draw on the slide. Again, I move the pen off, Command A to return to the arrow cursor. So those two you can access just by using shortcut keys. To erase anything you've drawn on the slide, you can just press the E key and it erases everything you've drawn. Now the other tool that you may want to access is the highlighter, but the highlighter can only be accessed by using the pen menu that is part of the visible portion because it's in the lower left-hand corner of the slide. So to do this, or to select any of the options in terms of pen color or highlighter color, what you first need to do is to pause the sharing of the screen so you can access it on the visible portion of the slide that's being shared with the audience. So I'll pause the screen, Command Shift T, that pauses the sharing. Now I can move my cursor over. You'll notice the pen icon here that comes up. I click on that and it allows me to choose which tool I want. You see the shortcut keys there for the arrow, the pen, and the laser pointer that we already used. And now here is the highlighter. You also can choose the pen color and laser color. So if I choose the highlighter, now I have the highlighter uh, as the cursor. Now I can resume the sharing. So I'll set Command Shift T again. I resume the sharing. Now my highlighter can go on the 
actual slide and I can highlight, let's say, this area here, move my cursor off, and again, Command A to turn it back to the arrow. Again, if you want to erase, just press the E key to erase whatever is drawn on the slide. So the key, re key here is to make sure that anytime you're accessing that menu to either choose the highlighter or to change any of the options for the drawing tools or the laser, that you first pause the sharing of the screen, select what you need, and then resume sharing so that it is a seamless experience for the audience. In Presenter View, you can interact with the slide to click on any of the links that would take you to another slide. And you can do this by moving your cursor onto the slide and clicking on it, but of course, if you move your cursor when you're sharing a portion of the screen, the audience sees you move the cursor there. So one of the things you might want to consider doing is to pause before you click on that particular link. This slide has a slide zoom link. It's in the lower corner on the right hand lower corner of this graph. So what I'll do so that the audience doesn't see me clicking on it is first I'll pause the sharing. So I use my command shift T to pause the sharing and I'll move my cursor onto the screen and I'll click on the link. It zooms to the detailed version of this particular slide. And so now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit command shift T again. And now I am showing the audience this particular detailed slide. And I can explain or discuss the data, answer any questions that they have as, as needed. And then I can use the regular way to get back to the original slide on a slide zoom, which is to hold the shift key down and press the up arrow. Shift up arrow takes me back to the original slide. Now I don't have to pause when I'm doing that because my cursor didn't have to move into that visible area that I'm sharing with the audience. So when you're going to click a link, the most seamless way to have it for the audience is to pause first, click the link, and then resume sharing when the new slide is now being displayed in that area that you're sharing with the audience. Presenter view allows you to access a list of all of your slides so that you can jump to any slide if you want to. You do have the thumbnail film strip down at the bottom, but it only lists the ones that are a few before and a few after the current slide. But if you want to access the entire list, you can through the menu that's in the lower left corner of the actual slide. So when we're going to access that, we don't want the audience to see it. So what we do first is we pause the sharing. So command shift T to pause the sharing. Now on the slide, I'll click on the three dots here and I'll say by title. And you'll notice that it lists all the title placeholder text for all of the slides. If there were a lot of slides, it would give me a scroll of a list. And if I want to say, okay, I want to go down to, let's say slide six right now, I can jump there, clicking on it. It goes directly to slide six. And now I'm on the slide that I want. I can hit command shift T, resume sharing. And what the audience sees is just that a new slide appeared. I have no idea what I did to make that happen. So it's a good way to be able to jump to any slide you need to, whether that's a backup slide or whether it's just jumping ahead in your presentation by first pausing the sharing, using the ability to see all the list of slides, select the one you want, and when it's displayed, resume sharing again, sharing that portion of the screen that has the current slide. In Presenter View on Windows, there's an option to use a magnifying glass zoom tool that allows you to zoom in on a portion of a slide and then walk through that slide in the zoomed in version with the audience. Don't have that tool available in the Mac version of Presenter View, but we can use the fact that we are sharing a portion of our screen as sort of a substitute for that particular type of feature, where we're gonna zoom in on a portion and then move that portion around on the overall slide. To do this, we're gonna change the size of the portion of the screen that we're sharing with the audience. Of course, before we do that, we wanna pause. So I'm gonna use my pause sharing, command shift T, and I'm gonna adjust the corner of my sharing rectangle. And I'm going to adjust the top handle here. I'm gonna get it so that it is an appropriate sized rectangle that I'm going to use to walk through this particular diagram that, that I'm showing. 
So now that I've zoomed in on it, what I can do is I can resume sharing. So I'm going to move my cursor up top because I'm going to grab that top handle. So I'm going to resume sharing, Command Shift T, and now the audience is seeing just that portion of the screen. And as I move the top thicker bar handle, it moves across. And you'll notice as I'm moving it, it automatically pauses. And when I release the mouse button, it shows the new section. So it's not a, a nice panning where the audience sees you moving it, but does allow you to zoom in on a variety of parts. So I did my first part, now I explain the second part, and I grab it again, move down to the next part, discuss that, and then one final move over here and show the last part. And if I need to adjust it, I can do that as well. So what I've done here is I've been able to zoom through this particular slide. When I want to go back to the overall slide, again, what I would need to do is to pause. So Command Shift T to pause. Now I'll move my sharing rectangle up to where I want it to be in terms of being able to show the entire current slide to the audience. And when I've sized that properly, then I'll resume sharing. Command Shift T to resume sharing and the audience now sees the entire slide again. So that's how we can uh, approximate that zooming in feature that the Windows version of Presenter View has by changing the size of what we're sharing. Now, how clear that's going to appear to your audience will depend on what resolution you have on the screen, as well as how large you make this current slide. If you're concerned that it's going to be a little bit too re low resolution, then adjust the vertical and horizontal uh, dividers here in Presenter View to make the current slide larger. And then when you zoom in, it'll be higher resolution for your audience. The ability to pause what the audience is seeing by pausing the screen allows you to be able to actually edit your slides in the middle of a presentation. So if I wanted to add, let's say, a text box to this particular slide because of some discussion that I had with the audience, what I can do is I can pause what I'm sharing with the audience. I use my Command Shift T to pause. Then I can actually go in PowerPoint and actually exit Presenter View. Now I'm on this slide. I can use my uh, menu here to insert a text box, let's say down at the bottom. Add text box. Now this slide has been updated. So I'm going to go back into my presenter view mode with option return. And you'll notice that the text box is there. I use my builds to get back to the same spot. So now I've updated my slide. I'm ready to share again. So I'll command shift T to resume sharing. And now the audience sees the new slide that I have edited. And because I had paused it, they don't, they don't know that I dropped out of presenter view. I actually edited the slide. So it allows you to be able to update your slides during the presentation because you're able to pause that screen share with the audience. They see only what they saw before. They don't see what you're doing on your computer. And then when you're ready, you resume sharing again. If you found this video helpful, there are three things you can do to help me out. First, click the like button below the video on YouTube. Second, leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And third, subscribe to my channel. Check out my websites and other videos with more tips and advice. Thanks again for watching.